More than 80 people were killed in the incident in Syria, but a few weeks ago in the Iraqi city of Mosul, a US-led coalition airstrike reportedly killed more than 200. In both cases, government officials claimed that terrorist munitions had been targeted. The Syria attack sparked immediate reaction both in the media and from Western officials, but Mosul didn't attract anywhere near as much attention. OK, lots to talk about. Let's bring in uh, US State Senator for Virginia and also a former prosecutor at the Pentagon. That's Richard Black joins me on the line now. Very good evening to you, Richard. And I want to start with that, that immediate comparison because there are a lot of similarities, I think, between the allegations, the claims that a, a US airstrike killed more than 200 in Mosul. Now we're looking at more than 80 dead in Idlib. Uh, the claim there being that this is um, the Syrian government. In both cases, there's counterclaims that it was the terrorists to blame. And yet, the coverage, the media coverage, and the actions and, and the rhetoric coming from politicians, very, very contrasting. Why such a difference? I want to be absolutely clear. I was the top prosecutor for the Pentagon, and uh, as, a, as a criminal expert, you always look for motive. And I defy anyone, anyone in the media, to give me a motive for why Syria should use poison gas uh, against the rebels. Now, why would Assad snatch defeat from the jaws of victory? Both attacks are similar in this respect. They involve civilians, not military people. Why, in the midst of all of these battles, would Assad choose to attack civilians rather than military people? It's simply irrational. Now, look at the evidence. Uh, again, as a prosecutor, I want to look at the evidence. We are relying strictly on evidence that is propagated by terrorists. One of them are the White Helmets, an arm of Al-Qaeda. Why would we take the word of terrorists who murdered 3,000 Americans on 9-11? Now, we know that in 2013, Turkey helped move sarin gas into Syria, and they were involved in the attack on Damascus. Now, Saudi Arabia gave $250 million to the Clinton Foundation, and they expected something in return. They wanted to run an oil pipeline through Syria into Turkey, and so they launched a war against Syria, which was a neutral, non-belligerent country. They launched it in 2011. And they are determined that they're going to win at all costs. The only way at this point that the terrorists will win is if they can draw the United States into this war on the side of the terrorists. Richard, I'm sorry to interrupt now, you because I just want to pick up on what you said there because we saw it prior to the, uh, to the Iraq conflict that the public, the US, the UK and other places were hoodwinked on the back of claims of, uh, of serious weapons, of, uh, of potential atrocities, and there was no evidence to back it up. Um, so surely we have to learn from history, and whatever the truth turns out to be, surely we have to have hard evidence before anybody can take any kind of uh, action towards conflict. Isn't it? Wouldn't that be the case, surely? There has, there has to be two things. There has to be a motive. If you don't have a motive, a reason for doing this, then you need to be highly suspect. You need to also look at who are the witnesses. The witnesses in this case are all terrorists, and all of them know either they tricked the Trump administration into changing its position, or they are going to lose the war. You, you mentioned briefly the white helmets, the videos from Idlib now circulating online. And a few, quite a lot of people have commented on the fact that these uh, aid workers, however you want to refer to the medical workers, don't seem to be wearing any kind of protective equipment for dealing with what we're told were hazardous materials. I just wondered what your take is on that. Well, we know that uh, if, you, if you touch a droplet of sarin gas, that immediately you lose your bowel movement, you begin having trouble breathing. These people obviously are not concerned about that. Uh, they are masters at staging deceptive operations. They've done it before, and uh, they will do it whenever it will benefit their cause. Again, what would be the motive of 
Syria attacking a group of women and children. What's the purpose? I defy any of the mainstream media to give me a reason why President Assad would launch a sarin gas attack against the, the uh, terrorist whom he's defeating everywhere on the battlefield. You want motive. I particularly want facts, regardless of how it turns out. We need facts, evidence. Uh, Nikki Haley's showing people photographs. Why is she doing that instead of giving us proof, evidence? There must be some. There must be testimonials, if nothing else, from survivors. Well, you know, this is, this is to cause people to react emotionally. You need to react rationally. I've been involved in many criminal trials. I will tell you, I could show you tons of terrible photographs. What does that mean? It means something bad happened. The question is not whether something bad happened. The question is who did it and why. No one can give me a reason why Syria would use poison gas. I defy anyone in the media to give me one good, sound reason why Syria would do this. Richard, it's been an honor to speak to you, men. Thanks for joining us once again on RT International. My guest is State Senator for Virginia and former top prosecutor at the Pentagon, Richard Black. Thank you.